Uh, thank you for your reply. So today we will have the last class of the, this course. Then on Friday, we will have the final exam. Okay. So, okay. So we concluded the chapter five uh, in the previous class. <clears throat> so we uh, covered the memory systems of a computer system. So actually we covered the memory hierarchy. So memory hierarchy is the very important uh, architectural technology, not architectural concept. Uh, and then also you need to remember that. So memory hierarchy exploit the data locality observed in our applications. So if, if the data locality is not observed, then there is no advantage of the memory hierarchy. But uh, in our normal applications, uh, high data locality is observed. So we can use the memory hierarchy to improve the performance of computer systems. Also, we learned about the virtual memory. So actually, the virtual, so I believe some students are confused about, confused with the, this virtual memory concept because it's not easy to understand. <laughs> so because uh, actually the virtual, the virtual means the fake, it's not real, but to the software, the operating system or computer systems, uh, fakely provide a very large size of a virtual memory, it's a virtual space. So actually this virtual memory is uh, provide to each process. So process means the learning applications, as applic that means the application on applic the process means an application that runs on the computer system. Okay. So if you so we you can also check the many processes running on your computer system by uh, pressing Control Alt Dell and then you can launch process manager on your Linux uh, no, Windows operating system. Okay. Uh, so, and then uh, in, the, in the today's class, uh, we will learn about the parallel processor architecture. So until now, we learned about the, some uh, single core process architecture. So we just focus on the architecture of single independent core. But, you know, so the, uh, actually the most of the processor we are using now are uh, now uh, it's multi-core processors, right? So because uh, a single processor includes the multiple cores. So actually uh, this core means uh, <clears throat> a single independent computer processor. So actually our applications can run on this single core because this single core is the independent processors. But, uh, but in a single chip, single chip of the CPU, this single chip includes many cores or multiple cores. So actually the most of the commodity core, most, most of the commodity CPU has multiple cores, okay? So now we, are, we will learn about this parallel process architecture. Okay, then, so let's think about this. So what is the benefit of parallel processor architecture? Actually, I believe I already explained about the benefit of uh, parallel processors. So what is the benefit? So it's very simple actually. So one worker is working for the same task, but for the same amount of a task, two workers are working. So which one will exhibit higher performance? So, so only one worker is working and then two workers are working. So obviously we expect that if two workers are working for the same amount of task, then we expect that oh, performance of this case will be higher because so, so two workers are working. So we, so we expect that we can 
split the, this task with the two parts and then two independent workers can, uh, can handle these split parts of the same amount of task. That's our expectation. But you know, so real world is more complex than our expectation. And then it's the same to the parallel processor architecture. So in the start of the, this class, I explained the parallel processor means that oh, it, this is the single uh, CPU chip and then in the single CPU chip, there are multiple cores. So if we just include these multiple cores in the single core processor, then is that, the, is that a complete uh, parallel process architecture, parallel processor? No, it's not. And then, so also another question is that, so there are four cores in this example, in a single CPU, then the performance can be four times for this thing. If we use this uh, CPU compared to the single core CPU, the performance can be four times. Because I ask a question, <laughs> it's not true. Why? It's same to our real world. So, so, so there's also some that it's the group project. So, so there are four members in your group, then the performance can be four times for this group. So, so only one student is doing a single project and then but for, for the same project, four students are working. So how, are the, how is the performance? It's 4X compared to the, this case? No, it's not. <laughs> right. Because there, are, there is overhead. So four workers are working for the city's single task. So there are many um, factors, overhead factors, okay? So actually the most uh, significant overhead of do, doing uh, this multiple, oops, uh, so, so there are, if there are many members in your group, then the most significant overhead is communication issues, okay? Okay. So let's see the, let's move on to the somewhat uh, process, uh, parallel process architecture. So what is the goal of the parallel process architecture? So it's the goal of parallel processor is to achieve higher performance, as I said. So if we invest more workers or if we invest more cores in a single chip, then we expect that, oh, with the, this, uh, more workers, then we can improve the performance or with this multi-core CPU, then we expect that, oh, we can improve the performance. But usually that's true, but the problem is that the improved, the increased performance is not proportional to the number of workers or number of cores. So that is the problem. So. <clears throat> so this uh, parallel process architecture is called multiprocessors. So there are multiple processors in the single CPU or single chip. And then for this parallel process architecture, we need to consider scalability, availability, or power efficiency. So we need to consider these factors. So what is scalability? So scalability means that if we invest N cores, like N cores, then we expect that the performance can be N times. But I said, it's not true. So the, perform the, the improved performance is not proportional to the number of cores in a single chip. So the scalable, so for this case, we said, we say the scalability is not maintained, okay? So if scalability means that if we invest n, n times of hardware resources and we, if the performance can be 
end times of the, this original hardware architecture, then we can say that oh, this, scale, this process architecture is scalable. So, so this is called the scalability, but in reality, it's, the scalability is very difficult issue of our real computer systems and availability. So if we use the multi-core systems, then we, we, so we expect we can run many programs or many applications concurrently at the same time. So that is very similar to the multitasking. So, so what is the multitasking? So if multitasking is supported by operating system, then we can run many applications at the same time. That's, but usually the number of processes running under this computer system is larger than the number of cores. So we need to also consider the availability of the system. So available resources in these multi-core systems, then power efficiency. So power efficiency means that, so it's the same, it's very similar to the scalability issue. So, but let's think about this. This is a four core system, and then this is single core system. So if we just compare the area of this chip, then this area of this chip will be uh, four times of the area of single core processor. And then that means, what is the equation of the power consumption? P equal alpha, this activity vector, C V square F. That is the equation of dynamic power consumption. So dynamic power consumption means that, so if we run our program on the CPU, then the power will be consumed. So that is called the dynamic power consumption. So another type of power consumption is the static power consumption. So static power consumption means that if we do nothing, so processor does nothing. So the, the does nothing. So no application runs on this process, but processor also consume power, electric power. There are many issues of the, this static power consumption. So actually for the modern processor, we need to also consider the, this static power consumption. So if we just see the, but uh, we can, I can say that the static power is pro proportional to the area of chip, of a chip. So if we see this power consumption equation, then for this P is proportional to the C is a capacitance. Actually the capacitance is a proportional to area, area of a chip. Also the static power is proportional to the area. So if we use multi-core architecture, then a single chip includes the multiple cores and then that means single chip has large, so occupy larger area compared to the single core architecture, then this CPU will consume much power. So we need to also consider the power efficiency. The problem is that even though we invest more power for this multi-core architecture, the, the performance is not scalable. So that is the problem. Okay. When we need uh, consider the uh, parallel processing of our, our application, then we can think two different kinds of parallelism. So one parallelism is that it's the task level parallelism. So task level parallelism means that, so if we just run our applications on the computer system, then we can find that, oh, many processes are running concurrently. So these, what is the process? Process is a independent thread. <laughs> so, so independent program, okay? So process actually 
the single applications can have many processes and then this process or process is the independent group of instruction so it's a, actually a program so this process can occupy a core okay a single core also, also so that means the set task level parallel means that a single application or multiple applications can have multiple processes then these multiple processes can be run concurrently so in run in parallel that is called the task level parallelism so what is the example of task level parallelism the example is that if we launch chrome browser then chrome will generate many processes so if so you can check the task manager on the your windows operating system so we, we just run only one application it's a chrome of chrome browser but chrome <laughs> launched the launches many processes that is similar to the task level parallelism and then parallel processing program so the parallel processing means that it's a single application a single application can generate multiple threads such as the matrix multiplication so this matrix multiplication is the a single application it's a single task but by changing the algorithm of this uh, matrix multiplication then we can split the this the generated thread for this matrix multiplication to the multiple parts okay this is called the parallel processing program okay so let's see the example of the hardware and then software of a parallel processor architecture so actually so usually the most of commodity cpu is has is the multi-core processors. So actually there's quad core Xeon, where even i3, i5, i7 CPUs have multiple cores. But very old CPUs like Pentium 4 is the single core processor. So this is so this is a single core system, a single core CPU, and then this, this is the multi-core CPU. And then so the software we can also we can the software may executed sequentially where software can be executed concurrently so so you, you need to distinguish sequential and concurrent So what is a sequential means sequential execution sequential execution means that it's just the programs a program is executed from top of the program to the, the bottom of the program sequentially so this is a single thread uh, application and then concurrently concurrent means that multiple threads or multiple processes are executed at the same time that is so for this case we, we say or oh, this is is the concurrently executed so you need to distinguish sequential execution and concurrent execution okay okay so let's see the parallel programming so I said that the most of uh, modern CPU, CPUs are multi-core processors. So which means a single CPU chip have multiple cores, okay? And then it's the same application. It's, it's, 
So let us assume that there is an application and this application is executed sequentially, okay? So, and then also this is the single core. Single core, this is the multiple core, it's a quad core, it's a 4X core. And then same application is executed by this multi-core CPUs or single core CPUs. Which one will be faster? So which one? Will, so if we just compare the performance of this application, which one will be faster? This application is just executed sequentially. And then this is the same core. It's the same core, 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 core. It's core. How is the, how is the performance? So what is the what is the what is the definition of the performance? It's one over execution time. So if we just compare the execution time of this application, then the execution time is the same or it's a so how about the, the single core? It's the same, slower, but faster. <laughs> so, yeah, it's the same, right? It's the same. Why? So I said that this application is executed only sequentially, okay? And then it's the same application and then core is the same, okay? So even, even though this chip, this CPU has multiple core, this is the single application, the single process, this single process can be only executed by this core. And then what are other cores doing? It's just in idle. They are just in idle state. So because this application is a sequential application, this application can be executed by this single core, even though there are multiple cores. So this same application can be executed by the same single core. Then only if we just focus on the performance of this single application, then performance of this single application is the same. Even though we use the multi-core processor, which will be more expensive than the single core processor, but the performance can be the same. If we just focus on the single application. And then this case, this situation is not what we want. So we want to increase the performance of this application. How? With the multi-core processor. How? If this application can be split into multiple parts that can be executed in parallel, then we can increase the performance of this application, okay? So that means actually in order to increase the performance of application with the parallel processor, we need to modify the algorithm of using this application. And then that is, that is not easy actually. <laughs> So think like this, oh, this, this application is the matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication like A multiplied by B, then how can we split the, this matrix multiplication part into the multiple independent tasks? We need to develop the parallel matrix multiplication algorithm, okay? That's why algorithm is critical, or algorithm is important. 
Okay. So this slide actually explains that this case. In order to use the benefit of the multi-core processor, then we need to modify our applications. So we need, we need to also consider the these factors. The partitioning means that the, this task is split into multiple parts. And coordination means that, oh, this task is split into multiple parts. But this, if the, this part is executed like this, then there will be, there will be no benefit by multi-core architecture or parallel processing. So we need to also execute the, this split part of the application like this. It, it's, a, it's a coordination issue. Also communications overhead. So single task is split into multiple parts. And then, so like matrix multiplication. And then we need to generate the, this result matrix from the multiple parts. So for the result should be aggregated. So that means that it's the result should be gathered and then it should be reproduced. So for this case, so also there can be some dependencies between the data used by the multiple part of the, this application, then the, then the data should be delivered to the other part or the data should be read from the other part. That is the communication overhead. So when we write a parallel processing code, then we also need to consider these issues, partitioning, coordination and communication overhead. Okay. Then AMDA's law. So actually the AMDA's law is very uh, important law in the computer architecture field, but it's very simple. So AMDA's law means that some task can be enhanced by different architecture or different number of hardware resources. But we can split this task into the, the task can be enhanced. Actually, the task can be enhanced. So it's a two B enhanced and then plus task that cannot be enhanced. So cannot be enhanced, okay? And then if we just improve the com uh, architecture of the uh, processor or if we just uh, invest the multi more cores in a single CPU, then only this part can be enhanced. Okay, so this this part is enhanced like t divided by n, but this part is not enhanced. It's the same. T cannot be enhanced. Okay. So Amdas law uh, tells us that, so actually the computer performance, the performance of the computer system can be determined by this part. The part that cannot be enhanced. So this Amdas law can be applied to the parallel process architecture 
and then also we can explain. It's a simply, it's a simple, actually simple explanation. So we can explain the limited benefit by multi-core processor with Amdahl's law. Okay. Actually, it, Amdahl's law is a very easy and then very simple and then it's, it's obvious, even obvious. But sometimes we do not think about the Amdahl's law in the application of computer systems and then we, we may miss the, some important uh, concept or important part of our computer system uh, architecture design. Okay. Okay. So let's apply Amdahl's law to the multi core architecture. So, as I explained, the Amdahl's law tells us that if the Amdahl's law is applied to the uh, multi core process architecture, then we can say that a sequential part can limit speed up in the multi core processor. Okay. So, so this is the example, the example of the Amdahl's law. So, let us assume that a single core, single CPU chip has 100 cores, like 100 processors, and then we want achieve 90 times of speed up. So you both uh, uh, request that, oh, I, I will invest the 100 cores. So I will, uh, I will invest the 100 cores, then make the 90 times of speed up. I'm generally supposed because this speed up is less than the 100 processors. But is it generous? So, so for example, this is the task. So, so a single application, and then this task can be divided to the parallelizable part and then sequential part. So this sequential part cannot be parallelized, okay? Cannot be split. So if we just invest 100 cores in a single CPU, then only this part can be improved, okay? So this is the original execution time of a, a task and then with the enhanced like 100 cores per CPU, then the execution time of the enhanced process is the parallel part. Only the parallel part is can be executed in parallel. So this part can be divided by 100. Okay. And the problem is that this part is the same. So, in order to achieve the nine, 90 times of a speed up, then the, this new T new should be 0 0.9 of T, okay? So if we just uh, So T, okay, if we just uh, cal cal calculate the, the fraction of the parallelizable part like this, then the parallelizable part, the fraction of the parallelizable part is the 0 0.9999. So that means that in this single task, 99% uh, 99 point 9% should be parallelizable part. So, so almost 
all of this task should be parallelized to achieve 90 times of speed up. Okay. So it's very ridiculous. So, if, so that means, oh, this original task, if the, this original task has the 10% of the sequential part, only 10% of the sequential part, but we cannot achieve the 90 times of speed up. So, Amdas law tells us that the, the part that cannot be enhanced may determine the overall performance of our computer system. So, so this is the some example. So this so let us assume that a single workload is composed of 10 scalar that so 10 scale scalar means that so scalar 10 scalar means that uh, this is the sequential sequential uh, part and then 10 by 10 matrix sum is a sum not multiplication and then let us assume that uh, let's calculate the speed up of 10 core system 10 core processor and then 100 core processors okay so scalar add so so like a plus p plus c plus d so sequential add so then the sequential uh, add add and then 100 by 100 matrix means that is the it can be parallelized so with the single core processor then we can calculate the execution time like 10 plus 100 multiplied by the execution time of add. And then if we just use the 100 cores, then execution time will be 10 multiplied by t add, right? 100 divided by 10 multiplied by, by, by t add. Only this part can be enhanced. So totally 20 T. How about the speed up? Speed up is the 5.5. So just five. So our expectation is that if we just use the 10 core system, then we can ex we expect that, oh, we have a 10 core system. So performance can be improved 10 times. But in reality, in this example, the speed of is just 5.5, okay? So it's about the 10 over 5.5, it's about 55% of our expectations, okay? If we just use the 100 processors and with the same uh, calculation, then speed up can be 10, it's the, but we invest 100 cores for these computer systems. So our expectation is that, the, oh, the performance can be improved 100 times, but in reality, the, the performance is improved 10 times. So about 10% of the, our expectation. So the scalability means that because of the, this sequential part of our task, even though we invest more cores in a single, you know, more cores in our computer system, the performance is not improved proportionally. So this is scaling example. Then what is the solution? Our solution. <laughs> so it's it's too bad. So we just invest hundred cores, but our we achieve only. 10, 10 times of a performance improvement. It's so bad. So how can you improve the performance? So in this example, this example, uh, we assume that the size of the amount of work, does, that means that the amount of workload is the same. Okay, so that means this is our 
application. And then actually we can develop this application only for single core system. And then if just the same application is uh, applied to the multi core system, then performance can be is it can be lower than the lower than our expectation, right? But if we just increase the this part, it's parallelizable part, then we can enjoy the benefit from multi core processor, right? So for example, if we use the 100 by 100 matrix for this application, so that means we just increase the parallelizable part. We just modified our application to have more parallelizable part, okay? Then we can enjoy the benefit of multi-core architecture here. So this, so someone say that uh, because of AMDA's law, the benefit by what core architecture is, is lower than our expectation. It's, it's, it's low, but the good thing is that if we, the more, as more computer systems have multi-core CPUs or multi-core architectures, then the software can change to have more, more parallelizable part. The software also will change, okay? So if the parallelizable part increases, then we can enjoy the benefit of multi-core architecture, okay? This is another some scaling factor. So this scaling is called the weak scaling. So actually this scaling is an example of the, this slide is called the strong scaling. So strong scaling is that the problem size is a fixed. It's the same application or same workload is applied to the single core system or multi-core systems. And then weak scaling is that the problem size can increase based on the number of cores, okay? And so I explained the strong scaling and then X scaling. Then, so let's see the relation between instruction and data. So until now, so we learned about the single, single core processor also some very simple uh, process architecture like add x1, x2, x3, like this. But if we see this instruction, we can find that our opponent of this instruction is has the scalar data. So scalar means that. So scalar is just a single data, okay? Scalar data. But I believe most of you learned, learned the vector and you are a high school student, the high school, right? So actually we can use the vector operation like V1 plus V1, V2 is equal V3, it's the vector operation. So what is a vector? In a single vector, this vector includes the multiple elements, right? X1, X2, X3, X4, okay? So in, a, in a mathematics, so we can also use vector data and then vector operation can be done by computer system, okay? So until now we learned about the, this scalar operation of the, of the core, 
of a single core, single processor. But we can also think about the vector operation in our processor, okay? And then what is the main feature of the, this vector operation? A single vector has multiple elements. And then another feature is that if we just uh, perform vector operation, the same operator, same operator is applied to multiple operands or elements. That is the feature of vector operation. So until now we, uh, we learned that with a single instruction, single data is handled. So single data is handled by single instruction. But for the business vector operation, the multiple data can be handled by single instruction. Okay, so based on the number of instructions and then number of data handled by these instructions, we can classify our processor into the four types like this. Okay. Uh, actually this uh, classification is called the Flynn's taxonomy. Flynn's taxonomy. So in the Flynn's, Flynn's taxonomy, so we just uh, categorize the data stream as the single data and the multiple data. Also we classify the instruction streams as the single instruction and the multiple data. So a single data can be handled by single instruction. So there is the SISD as I explained, single instruction handles single data, SISD. And then if the single instruction handles multiple data, this structure is, this architecture is called SIMD, just SIMD architecture. And then if the single data is handled by multiple instruction, it's MISD, but it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not good for our real world, so it's not used. And then the multiple instruction handle the multiple data. It's called the MIMD. So SISD is the what we learned until now. So single, so it's the single core process architecture like Intel Pentium 4. And then SIMD means that with a single instruction multiple data can be executed like v1 plus v2 equal v3 it's a vector operation the single operand a uh, single operator there is a single operator and then multiple operands are handled by this single operator okay and then the example of this SIMD architecture, it's called SIMD. The example of a SIMD architecture is the SSE, SSE instructions in x86 ISA. So, so I believe some students really know about the SSE instruction sets in Intel CPU or AMD CPUs. So actually the SSE, SSE is required for multimedia applications to accelerate the multi multimedia applications because multimedia applications handle vector type data, okay? So this is CMD, is the example of the CMD is the SSE instructions. And then actually the SSE uh, is instruction is supported by vector process. The mean is the multiple data is handled by mean act. A multiple instruction is the multi core architecture, like Intel Zeon. Okay. 
So let's focus on the, this SIMD architecture. So SIMD architecture, so, so actually SIMD architecture is a very, is uh, the parallel, parallel architecture, a parallel processor is called the SIMD, SIMD architecture where, and then usually we, we can uh, use the vector processors, as I said, so like vector processor just to support the vector operations, okay? So like V add that V is a vector operation, V1, V2, and V3. So vector type operands are executed by this vector type instruction, okay? And then vector processor just support the, this instruction. Okay? With a single instruction, the multiple data can be executed. But this is the example code of the vector uh, instructions. So, then also, I will explain about the multi-threading. Uh, so, so multi-threading. So what is multi-threading? Have we heard about the hyper-threading? What is the hyper-threading? So I believe some students uh, have heard about the logical cores or and physical cores. So for example, Intel i5, I don't know about the generation of the i5. So i5 has the full uh, eight, logical cores and four physical cores. And the i7 has the eight logical cores and eight physical cores. It's just a comparison, it's not real. So what is different? The number of logical cores is the same, but usually we don't say that oh, i7 has the eight logical cores because we just mentioned the eight physical cores. But I5 has eight logical cores and four physical cores. What does that mean? When you learned about the virtual memory, I said physical means real. Okay, so that means if I5 has Four physical cores. That means that oh, this CPU has four real cores. In reality, this CPU has four cores. What does logical core means? What does logical core mean for this i5? There are only four cores, but we can run eight threads concurrently. That is the meaning of logical core. So actually, so you, we can say that, oh, this I5 has only four cores in, okay? So, but this one core, a single core of I5 can run two thread concurrently. And then this technology is called hyper-threading by Intel, okay? But if we just see I7, the number of logical core is the same to the number of physical core. So that means that the real number of core in this I7 is the eight, okay? This I said, physical means real. <laughs> 
virtual or logical, it's, it's, it's kind of fake. So if a single core can run multiple threads, thread is similar to the thread is the process. So if a single core can run multiple threads concurrently, then this techno technique technology is called the multi-threading. Okay. The hyper-threading is a kind of multi-threading technology. Okay. Then how can we uh, implement this multi-threading? So think like this. If we just uh, see the our process architecture, our processor has one program counter and one register file, and then execution units like ALU, and then one data memory, and then one less file right back. But actually, in our processor, there are many execution units like uh, integer unit or floating point unit multiply and divide the unit, and then some special function unit like squared, square, square root. So there are many kinds of execution units in our processor. But also, how about the cache? There is a, a single level on, data, level on data cache but if the cache miss happens, like root misses in this cache, then the processor does nothing. And then actually, even though there are multiple execution units, this processor can just execute the one instruction per cycle. What's the problem? Problem is that, oh, it's not problem, <laughs> but it's an issue. There are multiple execution units, but these hardware resources are just wasted. So because of some, some cache misses or some multiple execution units, so idea is that if we just this part, register file and the program counter, if there are multiple program counters and then multiple register files, like two program counter and two register file, and then we can use the, this execution units or some caches, cache resources, if the, if available. That is the multi-threading idea. Okay. So, so the multi-threading architecture, just to remember the, this figure. So this is the coarse-grained multi-threading. This is the fine-grained multi-threading. This is the simultaneous multi-threading. So simultaneous multi-threading. So actually, this is the hyper-threading of the Intel. And then let us assume that there are four threads, okay? And then also the Intel execute the multiple instructions per cycle, it's a super scalar processor. So uh, this, is, this figure shows that how the instructions are executed for each thread, okay? So, for, uh, so this figure shows that in this clock cycle, thread A executes the two instructions and then Thread A execute the one instruction for the next clock cycle, and then encounters the encounters cache miss. If a cache miss happens, the instruction need to wait until the data arrives in this cache from the low level cache. So, no instructions will be executed for this thread. And then for thread B, three instructions are executed for clock cycle 
one and then two instructions next week. Okay. So, and then, so you can say that oh, this is the uh, Leveron cache miss. So, coarse grained multi threading means that if a thread encounters cache miss, then the, the execution of this processor is changed to the different thread. Okay, this is the coarse grained multi threading. So, in this example, well, thread A is executing, and then thread A encounters cache miss. So, thread A cannot be executed in this case. So, then thread B is the processor changes to the thread B, and then thread B is executed. Fine grained multi threading means that the thread is changed every cycle, okay? So in this figure, thread A is executed, B is executed, C is executed, D is executed. So why is it this? So in the fine-grained multi-threading, so we can hide the, some latency of the, some longer, long, long latency of execution units, okay? So this is fine grained multi threading. Simultaneous multi threading is there. So there are some instruction slots in the processor. And then if the instruction slots are available, then available instructions are issued from the multiple thread. Okay. So this is the simultaneous multi threading. So hyper-threading is the kind of simultaneous multi-threading. Okay, so, so we can say that a simultaneous multi-threading without this simultaneous multi-threading, so we can uh, maximize the efficiency of our processor, hardware resources of our processor, okay? So this is the multi-threading, what's the problem? So problem is that the hardware can be very complex, okay? So in order to organize the multiple instructions from multiple thread, the hardware structure can be very complex. If the, we use the very complex hardware, then what is the issue? The issue is that the hardware may consume much power. So actually, uh, so we can say that the efficiency of the, of this simultaneous multi-threading is very high, but because of a complex hardware architecture, then the the, the power will be more power will be consumed. That's the problem. So. Instead of this multi-threading architecture, then we may invest more smaller cores, okay? And then actually this is the idea of GPU. So for the CPU, CPU has a very complex, uh, small number of cores, but GPU has large number of simple cores. So it does this GPU, then we can maximize the parallelism of our processor. Okay. Okay. So I will skip about the GPU. Okay. So in this uh, in the today's class, we learned about the multi core architecture and then parallel processing. And Amdahl's law. Amdahl's law is is very important. Amdahl's law, and then the Flynn's taxonomy then multi-threading, okay? Cool. Okay, so I will conclude the, the discourse. So I will close the discourse, I will conclude the discourse. So 
what we learned. So we learned about the, some ex computer system architecture at an abstraction level. So I believe some students uh, remember that this syllabus slide. So what is covered in this course? What was covered in this course? So we learned about the basic concept of computer systems. And then we learned about the performance metrics in chapter one. And then we learned about the ISR, instruction set architecture, chapter two, then the chapter three, so I did logic, but chapter two was very short. And then we learned about the pipeline architecture or single cycle process architecture. So chapter four, so it's chapter five, so memory hierarchy. And then chapter six, we learned about the parallel process architecture. So, so and then I say I believe I, I remember that in the first class in the, in the first class I explained that oh this 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 these are uh, important okay chapter two chapter four and chapter five so I hope uh, student can understand about the ISR instruction set architecture and then process architecture like pipeline architecture and memory hierarchy. Okay. Because you took this course, the computer architecture course for undergraduate student, but what we did not learn. So, so these topics are not covered by undergraduate level computer architecture course, like out of order processor, superscalar, the prediction technology, uh, cache coherence, memory consistency, prefetch storage, simulator, and FPG. These are advanced topics. And then uh, these advanced topics are covered by advanced computer architecture course. And then these advanced computer architecture course can be uh, provided for senior students or uh, graduate students, okay? So if you are interested, then you can take the advanced computer architecture course, okay? Actually, the modern processors have uh, these advanced technology. So actually, these concepts like instructor architecture, uh, pipeline plus architecture, memory hierarchy is very important. But if you want to uh, know about the advanced technology or advanced topics in uh, computer architecture, then you can take the advanced course. Okay. And I believe some students remember this figure. So which process is better? In the Pentium 4, 1.3 gigahertz, Raspberry Pi, which is the uh, ARM ISR, so 1.2 gigahertz. <laughs> because instruction set architecture and then the microarchitecture is different for these two different computer systems, then you cannot compare the performance directly, okay? About this Intel Zeon, Intel i7, which processor is better? Okay, usually Zeon has uh, more cores like parallel processors, but if we just compare the performance of a single thread application, like sequential application, then the performance can be very similar. So usually if i7 has higher clock weight, then the performance of a single thread can be uh, higher on i7 processor because Intel Xeon processor is designed for server processors, server computer systems, which uh, which is, uh, the server process server computer systems are designed for supporting many users or many. Uh, different tasks, okay? About this, the Zoom and NVIDIA Tesla GPU, and then as I explained in chapter six, so these are about the, about the core processors, but Intel Zoom has some uh, tens of, like uh, about the 20 cores, but each core is very complex and then very powerful, but NVIDIA Tesla has the about the 500 to more than 1000 cores. And then 
but this single core of the, this NVIDIA Tesla is very simple. Okay, which one is better? I don't know. It depends on the type of application. Okay. So if you want to run machine learning applications or neural networks, then NVIDIA Tesla is good for these applications. But if you want to run some normal applications like uh, some web browser where uh, <laughs> operating systems, then Intel Xeon will be better. Okay, so I don't want to, so actually I'm showing this photo of COVID, COVID virus. So during four semesters, so I hope, actually, I hope the COVID-19 pandemic should be uh, hopefully the, the, we can uh, overcome the um, COVID-19 pan pandemic, but so unfortunately, the pandemic is getting more severe. So, so I don't know. <laughs> so I want to erase this uh, photo of a COVID-19 virus <laughs> from the, this uh, closing slide. But unfortunately, I'm showing this uh, COVID-19 virus photo. So, yeah, so I, I understand that you are in the uh, some difficult situation. And then also this class is provided via Zoom. <laughs> so I want, uh, actually in-person class is uh, uh, better for students also, it's good for me, but uh, it's not easy. So we are living in very difficult, uh, difficult era, okay? So, and then if you are interested, then after final exam, then you can uh, watch the, this Turing lecture video. And then actually Turing lecture is the, it's called the Nobel prize of the computer engineering or computer science field. And then actually the, the recipient of the, this Turing award in 2018 uh, were uh, David Patterson and John Hennessy. So these, uh, they are the authors of the, your textbook, okay? And the very famous people. Uh, so they explain about the, some history of the process of process architecture also the, some development and then the recent topics of process architecture design. And then they said that well, today is the golden age of computer architecture because the computer systems are changing, okay? So, okay, this is the end of the discourse. And then thank you for your effort for this course. And then I hope everyone stays safe and stays healthy amid COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, it's not good, <laughs> but yeah, stay safe and stay healthy. And then thank you for your efforts. And then that's it. And then I hope everyone can get good scores in the final exam, okay? Okay, bye guys. 네, 오늘 배운 것까지 시험 범위 왔습니다.